hey, this is from Mab's bed to your head. I'm here with Ken Bauman of Stacked EDH, and I'm here to ask him some questions about uh, Commander. Nice. Thanks for having me, Mab. Lovely to have you. Um, so let's get right down to it. Question number one. What about Commander brings you joy? Oh boy. Okay. I mean, I could that that question elicits an answer from me that could be, you know, like 3 hours long, but I think ultimately why I love Commander could be boiled down just to a few reasons. Um the first reason the sort of primary attraction of the game was that it was a social game and it it was you know, a game that promised interacting pretty regularly with three plus people. And that was very important to me when I got introduced to the format um, and still is now I, I, you know, an ideal pod of four players of Commander. That's my favorite situation to be in, um, in the realm of games and sort of the, the mechanical or intellectual itch that the game scratches for me is that I, I haven't encountered another game that is as complex and as surprising than Commander. Um, and I think that, you know, I've always loved Magic. I started playing it when I was a kid. But um, Commander seems to me to be what Magic was sort of always designed for, unknowingly. And so, I, you know, I'm a very competitive person. I love playing games. And I love social games as well. I love sort of interacting with my peers and uh, trying, hopefully, uh, gently to persuade them to do what I want. Um, and so Commander gives me that mechanical complexity as well as the sort of social challenge that I find really compelling out of a game. That is a really good and well thought out answer. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I've thought a little bit about Commander, you know, just like a tiny bit these, this last year or so. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so question number two. Uh, what positive impacts has the game had on your life? So pretty, pretty immense positive impacts. I started playing when I was in a really bad place. I was really pretty severely mentally ill at the time and um, very depressed. And, you know, thinking about the game uh, and playing the game and looking forward to playing the game and, you know, paying attention to new Magic releases from the lens of being a Commander player... I mean, no joke helped keep me alive. So it was very important to me when I first got to know the format. And um, I think that, yeah, I mean, I think that that, in a nutshell, that sort of testifies to, to the goodness of the game and why it remains important. You know, it gives me something intellectual to do that feels joyful and not like high stakes in a way that, you know, like sitting on the phone with an insurance company can be high stakes and intellectual. Um, and so I think that that's sort of an ideal outlet for me. Um, you know, sometimes I'm a little regretful of uh, the amount of money I've spent on cardboard, but at the same time, I don't know, I could have been blown in on many other things that uh, let's just say are consumable and wouldn't hold their value. So, you know, in, insofar as these pieces of cardboard are assets, which, you know, kind of sadly they are, um, I don't feel that bad. You know, ultimately it's, it's money that could be made back to some extent. Um, and, you know, for my primary hobby, uh, I don't, I don't mind a hobby that's, that uses assets, you know, as opposed to something that you just use and then it's done. Yeah. You're not doing non-fungible tokens. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to eat the cards. You don't have to eat the cards when you lose or something. Um, Playing for anti. Yeah, no more. No more. Thank God for that, I suppose. Excellent. Uh, question number three. What have you seen or experienced in the community that has been a real positive influence, specifically from the community? Okay, yeah. Well, I think that um, a little sort of like a little historical context has been really useful for me because when I started playing in 94, you know, I was a kid. And so, I, you know, I think I was a little bit attentive, but 
you know, I didn't catch everything, certainly, but I did know enough then. And then, you know, as I grew up playing, knew enough then to know that, you know, Magic was pretty much played mostly, if not entirely, at least in my environment, by a bunch of white boys. And that, you know, it played into sort of stereotypical, bigoted, young nerd culture. And I didn't love that. And when I stopped playing, that was sort of one of the reasons. It didn't feel didn't feel like an inclusive game in the way that the games I went on to play felt a little bit more inclusive at the time. But coming back to Magic in, you know, whatever this was, 2017, um, 2018, I see a tremendous amount of progress, social progress, about sort of who Wizards wants to play the game. You know, there are economic motives there. They want everybody to play the game, so they're going to try to appeal to a bro as broad an audience as possible, which, you know, we could view cynically, and I certainly do sometimes, but I also know that more and more I see people feeling comfortable playing cards um, with their friends and playing cards with strangers who, back in 1994, they would have been excluded from the game. And now they're welcomed in and supported and defended by, you know, members of the community who traditionally have more power. Um, and that's really beautiful to me. That, that feels to me probably the most important component of the game's development. It's not really anything mechanical, not really anything aesthetic or economical. Um, it's just social. And if Magic is the gathering that it promises it is in its title, and if Commander is the premier social format, of an already social game, then we owe it to each other to make the game as sort of charitable and loving as possible. Hell yes. I mean, you know personally that that's a huge thing for me and being part of my local meta, uh, that's just been the most amazing thing in my life. Yeah, which is great. I mean, that's amazing to hear. And, and you know, I, I think that the more that we can recreate those circumstances or com not compel, but just sort of persuade other people to welcome, you know, welcome everybody to play the game um, and be accommodating. It makes the games more interesting too, you know? So there's, there's, a, it's, 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 it's like a selfish motive too. The games get better, you know, the more people are at the table and, and the more diverse your meta, both mechanically, but also just personally, um, the better the games will be. Um, I, I, you know, I believe that I've seen it played out in many different circumstances in and outside of games for my entire life. Um, and I think that the community is getting better collectively and universally at acknowledging that. I would strongly agree. Okay. Uh, question number four, what positive members of the community would you like to give a shout out to today? Oh, wow. Okay. So many people, um, you know, like. Yeah, so many people. Um, Sage, Sage of Fables, they're awesome. Um, really enjoy playing with them and love their content. And I'm super happy to sort of have them in what feels to me sort of like a growing crew online. Um, Alan, a mental misplay, is just the, the absolute homie. I love him to death. He's such a sweet man and is such a generous person. And I love his attitude. I think that he's really been one of the one of the sort of central figures to me, at least in my mind, of coalescing a bunch of good people in a scene, you know, and every, every kind of cultural sub or subcultural scene winds up having those like, you know, those ad hoc leaders who don't really think of themselves as leaders. They think of themselves as sort of, you know, hype people. But Alan is that person um, for for what feels like a pretty, pretty burgeoning and healthy um, and growing community. Uh <sighs> I don't, yeah, I don't, I mean, I mean, Sam of Heuristic Studies, you know, we've been chatting a little bit um, in the DMs and Twitter, just sort of exchanging book recommendations and talking about our past in Texas and everything. And, you know, I've always loved his work and really deeply admired it. And he's a lovely person and very curious. And I admire that quality more than most qualities in folks. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I feel like I could go on forever. But I mean, basically everybody who I pay attention to on a daily basis on Twitter, right, for, for good old magic Twitter, right. um, it's a good scene, or at least the people I pay attention to. I've tried to cultivate a really good scene where people are positive, supportive, charitable, 
critical, but when they are critical, they're not going for the clicks, right? They're, they've got substantial reasons to be critical. And um, so, yeah, I think that the, the, the scene and particularly the scene that swirls around the ramp gang crew is very welcoming, very accommodating and uh, very creative. You know, people want to pop off and grow the community in fun, exciting new ways. So those are the folks that pop to my mind immediately. Hell yes. I wouldn't expect you to give a shout out to everyone because, well, we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could sit here for five hours <laughs> listing, just listing names. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's been amazing. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a very good thing. And I've been very luckily, lucky to be so well received in the community because it really does seem like most people who are making content for magic, um, that I've I met or talked with or worked with temporarily, they're really they're kind and they wanna they wanna support each other and they wanna you know cultivate a joyful experience and of course there are creators at the margin who you know sort of farm hate more or less but they're they feel marginal you know they don't feel central anymore um, and I think that that's, that's a good thing. So yeah, I, I agree. I could be listed names all day. I'll, sp I'll spare the viewers. Yeah. Last and final question. Tell me about your role in the, com the commander community and where we can find your content. Okay. So I'll give a sort of the a more theoretical answer, conceptual answer, and then a more practical answer. So I think the conceptual answer is, um, you know, stack TDH, as you know, right, right. We started it. We wanted to just share our gameplay. And then I, then I got into this sort of position of being like, okay, well, if I'm going to bring myself to this channel, I'm going to be the nerd who wants, who like sort of attempts to think holistically about what we're up to and, um, you know, use some historical context to think about the game, but also try to bring my own perspective, you know, um, to the game. And so the video essays that um, I made, those have been the channel's most popular videos. And I think that's because there is still, there, there aren't too many people making, I don't, I don't know what you want to call it, but sort of the Ristic Studies-ish considerations about the game, you know, the, the more contemplative, right? It, it's just a more contemplative mode um, that tries to assess the game as a whole and appreciate it in a deep way. Yeah. Um, and so I think that my role in the community right now is to be one of those those people who who try to constantly ground our thinking about the game in as wide a picture um, as we can conceive of in the moment, given our capacities, you know, um, and then also to really try to cultivate. And this is for again reasons, selfish reasons as well. I'm trying to do this in myself, but cultivate a different kind of attitude for enfranchised players um, away from sort of the the complaint oriented embittered attitude of enfranchised magic players which i grew up learning about and seeing um i w i really want the culture of the game to change to be more joyful and positive and affirmative and experimental ultimately um and i don't think that really magic's historical baggage is doing it much good at the moment i want to i want to change how we talk about the game and i want to change how we play the game um of course again primarily for myself so that i can enjoy it more and then if other people want to you know want to like do a little pattern recognition and try to do the same thing great um so that's i think those are sort of my conceptual overarching goals is help people change the way they think and talk about the game so that they enjoy it more deeply but also feel that it has a sort of more grounded less fraught um relationship in their mind you know and then stack tdh is pretty simple if you just google stack tdh it's the first result um, we've got a youtube channel it's where we put out all of our videos I'm on Twitter, I run the Twitter and I run the Instagram. Um, and I'm pretty active on Twitter just because, you know, it's a box I can write in and I tend to fill those boxes. Um, and and I also try to just, yeah, I'm really trying to find people in the community that feel, you know, like kindred spirits and make sure that, um, make sure that the chair, the, like who, the people who seem to be the most charitable in the community are getting some light on them. Um, so I try to do that on Twitter a little bit and then sometimes just, you know, write a million tweets about 
deck building or whatever. Um, but yeah, Stacked EDH, it's, it's on YouTube. And um, if you wind up watching the videos and you are curious about them or have questions or want to talk about them or criticisms or whatever, um, please hit me up. And I'd love to have that conversation. Cool. Well, that's it for the interview. Thanks for sharing your time with me this morning. Thank you very much. To anybody who's watching, I love you. Uh, I'm sure Ken feels the same. Yeah, big hearts. Be, be, be kind to yourselves out there.